In the following lecture, we're going to learn about uh, titration curves, which are pH curves for uh, experiments involving titration, acids and bases. Uh, the first thing, very basic thing that you should know about uh, is that an acid is a proton donor, which is uh, which simply means that it is a molecule that produces uh, H positive ions. And a base is a proton acceptor, something that accepts or gains H plus one ions. Now, I'm going to start off with the very basic. I'm going to explain first what why do you why do you study uh, acids and bases why is h plus one so important so you've got a beaker that's full of water uh, it's got it's got h2o molecules and water ionizes very very weakly it produces two ions one is h plus one the other one is oh ions so whenever you see a beaker that contains water it's it's going to have very very few h plus one ions and oh ions in the solution uh, most of the molecules in uh, water would be water would be h2o most of them will not be breaking down but very few will so this is probably how it's going to look like uh, very few h plus one and oh ions floating around but they would be uh, produced in equal quantity uh, so what that basically means is that the h plus one and the oh ion concentration is basically equal uh, so there's going to be a beaker that will have equal concentration and that's known as ph being equal to seven so whenever you see ph seven it basically means that the concentration of H plus 1 and OH ions is equal. Now, you don't need to learn about how pH is calculated, but uh, uh, I'll just give you, remember this is not important for AS, but I'll just give you a very quick, uh, just to improve your understanding, but otherwise you already know what pH 7 is, what it stands for. Uh, it stands for this thing. I'm just going to tell you why. where you get this number. You get this number because uh, the concentration of H plus 1, uh, the concentration of both ions is uh, 1 into 10 to the minus 7, mole per decimeter cube uh, which is very less uh, the equal so when you get the term ph7 you take uh, you express these values in the t in in log log expresses these values in the powers of 10 so ph is simply whenever you see the term ph that simply refers to the negative log of the concentration of the h plus one ions so it's the negative log of the concentration so when you express it in the powers of 10 it's going to come out to be seven uh, especially when it gets multiplied by uh, uh, minus one uh, it's going to become plus 7. So that is what pH is. It just expresses these values or the concentrations of H plus 1 in the powers of 10 or it expresses it in log. But anyways, that's not important. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, what if I add a molecule that is an acid? So if I, if I add a molecule that's a proton donor. So this is that molecule. It starts to produce H plus 9s. So all of a sudden, what's going to happen is that the concentration of H plus 1 will start to will start to increase. There's going to be more and more H plus 1 ions in the solution and fewer OH ions. So now what happens is that the solution has become acidic. So what happens in an acidic environment is that the concentration of uh, H plus 1 goes up and the concentration of OH ion decreases. Uh, if it's a strong acid, it will produce a lot of H plus 1 ions. So the concentration of H plus 1 is going to be a lot higher. It's going to fully ionize. And the pH in that case would be somewhere close to 1. Uh, and if it's a weak acid, the pH would be around 4 to 7. That means uh, you'll have fewer H plus 1. The H plus 1 concentration is, is still higher, but not by a big margin. And vice versa, what can also happen is that uh, you can add a base, uh, which is a proton acceptor. So, for example, if I add a base, uh, let's say that is A minus 1, it will start accepting H plus 1. And uh, so all the H plus 1 will get used up. So all the H plus 1 that you see in the container over here, these will get used up. And not only will they get used up, uh, the base will also start accepting H plus 1 from water molecules. And that would leave you with more and more OH ions. So the solution will have more OH ions and fewer H plus 1 ions. So that is going to be called a basic solution. So in the basic solution, the concentration of OH ions, uh, they go up. And the concentration of H plus 1 is, so OH ion is higher, H plus 1 concentration is lesser. If you have a weak base, uh, the concentration of OH ion is not going to be, it's not going to be higher by a big amount. Uh, so the pH would be around 8 to 10. If it's a, if it's a very strong base, the concentration, concentration of OH ions would be very, very high. And the pH would be around 11 to 14. Now let's jump to titration. So this is what a typical titration looks like, that you have an acid-based titration. You've got a base, uh, 
uh, over here I'm adding a strong base in a beaker or in a conical flask and you're pouring from a burette you're pouring an acid from the top and that's a strong acid so initially you've got a strong base over here so right at the beginning uh, your pH would be right at the start initial since you haven't added any acid from the top it's a strong base strong bases they've got a pH that's uh, very close to 14 let's give it a value I'm going to I'm going to give that value as 13 now as soon as I start pouring the acid that's where my titration starts so as soon as I start pouring the acid the base will eventually get neutralized so so the next step is the base gets neutralized and all the base at the bottom over here would eventually would eventually react so base gets neutralized when the base gets finished uh, salt and water is produced and the pH would now be equal to 7 uh, the next thing is so I'm, I'm pouring in acid from the star from the top and the base in the flask is getting neutralized and eventually it's going to get neutralized uh, if I keep on pouring the acid from the top even after the base is gone then the solution would become acidic because I'm adding excess acid so if I continue after this point then you're adding excess acid and when you add excess acid uh, the pH will start to decrease and since it's a strong acid it's going to come close to pH 1 or 2 that's it comes close to pH 2 so that's basically your typical pH curve for for an acid that's being poured to a base initially the pH you got a strong base at the bottom so the pH was very high uh, then you started adding the acid when you started adding the acid the base over here got neutralized and got used up and the pH became equal to 7 because there's no base anymore and if you continue to add acid even after that point uh, that's the pH would uh, would become close to 2 because you're adding excess acid uh, the point where the base gets neutralized that's known as the equivalence point so a term is used or you can you can in simple words you can also refer, refer to I mean the correct word is equivalence uh, in simple terms that's the neutralization point that's the point where if there were 10 moles of base and they need 10 moles of acid to be added and if you've added 10 moles the base is supposed to get neutralized completely and it will react completely so uh, that's known as the equivalence point now we're going to sketch all of this on uh, on a simple uh, piece of uh, on a simple chart so here's a grid one axis would be the pH you're, you're sketching the pH on the other si side you're checking how much acid is being added so if I if I refer to this initially the pH was uh, when no acid was added the pH was very very strong very very high and I told you that the pH was 13 because you got a strong base in the flask over here so so right at the beginning the pH was really high and it was 13 so you're starting at at this point uh, then what happened was at a certain point you started adding acid the volume of acid went up you started pouring in the acid strong acid from the top and the base got neutralized the pH became almost equal to 7 uh, so that's your equivalence point so at certain point the pH would become and let me would become somewhat equal to 7 and then what will happen is that if I don't stop at this point that's my that's my equivalence point these that, that was the volume of acid that I should have added I started pouring in the acid and then the base got neutralized and it's at this point that I should stop and if I don't stop if I continue to pour in acid from the top uh, there's going to be more and more excess acid added and uh, the pH would become very very acidic because there's nothing to react with uh, for the acid so the pH would basically go down to let's say it goes down to 2 and that's my mark now you're going to sketch the curve now and the curve has a very typical shape and that typical shape is an S-shaped curve. Uh, what the curve tells you is that uh, as you're pouring in the acid and the base at the bottom is getting neutralized, this base over here is getting neutralized, the pH does not gradually change. What happens is that uh, as the acid is poured, the base gets neutralized, It becomes uh, the pH becomes lesser and lesser. And when it reaches something close to the equivalence point, that's where the pH drops massively. So you got a got an almost straight line around the equivalence point and then after that the pH starts to rise and it starts to increase uh, over here in this range it gradually increases but very close to the equivalence point or neutralization point that's where the pH the massive change in pH happens.
and uh, so the pH change is abrupt and there's a reason for that uh, the reason for that is uh, is and you don't need to go into the into details about that but I'll just give you a brief reason and the reason for that is that the pH curve is the logarithmic scale it's the log of the concentration of H plus 1 so when the H plus 1 gets neutralized uh, or it's close to the equivalence point the H plus 1 concentration is very very less Expressing something in the powers of 10 becomes uh, it becomes a much bigger value. For example, 10 power minus 10 uh, would be a very small value, but in terms of log or negative log, that's power 10. So that's uh, that's a big value. So so what the log does is that it shows smaller values as bigger values. So this is why around the equivalence point where the H1 concentration changes very little because the H1 concentration is almost all of it is neutralized. That's where uh, the log blows it up. It shows a much bigger or steeper decline uh, because it's the logarithmic scale. Smaller values appear to be bigger values when you take the log. But you're going to keep things very, very simple. Remember an S-shaped curve, very little change. If it's very far away from the equivalence point, very little change. Most of the change, pH change, would happen around the equivalence point. And this is the typical shape of uh, what an acid base or, or this one specifically where the acid is coming from the top and the base is at the bottom so so that's a typical curve for this and uh, this point over here is the equivalence point now remember finding the equivalence point of where there's a sharp decline that's like a moles question you just have to figure out the volume of acid that is needed for complete neutralization. And once you find that, that's the point, that's the volume of the acid at which the pH would uh, massively decline. Now, here's another titration curve, and uh, that is exa exactly the opposite of what we just studied. Uh, the only difference is, okay, now you've got uh, NOH that's being added from the top, and uh, the HCl, the strong acid, uh, is at the bottom. So... So you got a strong acid at the at the bottom, and you're adding you're adding a strong base from the top. So the only difference now is that uh, initially the acid is very strong. I mean, the solution over here is very strongly acidic because it's a strong acid. So the pH is somewhere around one or two, and uh, uh, slowly when the base gets added, the acid gets neutralized. So the acid is going to get neutralized. And eventually the pH of the solution will become 7 when the when all of the acid uh, it reacts. So when all the acid reacts, because it gets uh, reacted with NaOH, the pH will reach uh, 7. And that's your equivalence point. That is the point where you should stop the titration. But if you don't stop the titration at this point and you continue to pour in more NaOH into the flask, there's excess NaOH. Uh, when you add excess NaOH, the solution will become basic. So the pH would cross the equivalence point and then it will become basic or strongly basic in this case and the pH would be somewhere around 12 or 13. So, so that's how the curve is going to look like. So in AS, all you have to know is the shape of this curve. Uh, acidic first and when excess NOH is added, if you go past the equivalence point, uh, the, which is kind of the neutralization point, uh, the solution would become more basic and strongly basic. Now here's another titration curve that is kind of based on the same concept uh, but this time I've got a strong acid like HCl I'm adding it to a weak base. I'm trying to neutralize uh, a weak base uh, and that weak base is usually a nitrogen base. Uh, any nitrogen base is considered a weak base uh, whether it's a, it's a part of uh, an organic molecule like amines or phenylamines uh, or ammonia. They're all weak bases. Uh, so make sure you remember which ones are your weak bases. So when you add a strong acid to a weak base, it's a weak base, the pH is initially around somewhere around 10, it's not, it's not very, very high. So your, your starting point initially, it's a, it's a very weak base. So initially the solution over here has a lower pH, uh, somewhere around 10, 11 or 8, 9. And then it starts getting neutralized. As you start adding the acid from the top, uh, the ammonia gets neutralized and there would come a point when all the ammonia gets used up. That's, that's the equivalence point where the moles of the base um, if you have, let's say, they react in one ratio one. So if you had 10 moles of this and you add 10 moles of HCl, the ammonia gets completely neutralized. So that's your equivalence point. And if you continue to add more acid into the flask after the equivalence point, then there's going to be excess HCl that, that's going into the flask. 
and that will make the solution very very acidic so the final ph will become very very acidic if you add too much of the acid so that's how the ph of the solution would vary weakly basic initially then all of a sudden equivalence point is reached and the solution then starts turning acidic because you're adding too much uh, hcl uh, this is the point where you should stop so that's uh, that's how the curve would look like it's not starting very high uh, but it's ending very very low so i'll just now do a quick uh, summary of titration curves uh, this is this scenario the acid is at the bottom and the base is being added uh, so every time the solution is always acidic so it just depends it just depends on whether it's a weak acid or a strong acid so if you've got a strong acid initially the ph would be very very low so in the, both these cases you've got a strong acid and if the base that you're adding is a strong base uh, uh, it's going to reach equivalence it's going to neutralize the acid first uh, so the acid over here gets used up uh, and if you add excess of the base the solution will become very very strongly basic on the other hand if you have a weak base that you're adding if you add too much of it the solution will become basic but it's not going to be that basic it's just going to be weakly basic uh, this one is over here uh, a curve for a strong base with a weak acid so initially if you have a weak acid the pH is going to be uh, low but not that low it would be around 4 5 and uh, it will get neutralized it will reach equivalence pH 7 and if you continue to add base strong base the solution will become highly basic and the pH would rise to around 14 and this last one uh, is for a weak acid weak base so you have a weak acid uh, it gets neutralized when you add a base but the base is also weak so if you add too much of it the solution will become basic but only very very slightly basic so that's for the last one so you will have four types of titration curves and it would be the other way around if you if you have uh, the base at the bottom and the acid is being added to the top so the curve would just be the opposite i mean this side over here it will be basic initially and then it will become acidic so the curve would be exactly the same except it would be flipped around uh, if the base was at the bottom uh, if the base was at the bottom over here as well the solution would be basic first and then it will become acidic strongly acidic so it i mean the curve would be this part would be at the start and this part over here would be at the end so you're going to get the same type of curves except uh, they would just be the other way around or flipped versions of the same curve